Hello there guys, Coaster Chal here, Dongster Born, but built for theme parks and welcome to another theme park Coaster Chal Chats, the interview series where we talk to people inside the industry and outside the industry and other industries and uh, discuss about their recent projects and also get them involved in the theme park conversation. This is part two of our SNS interview, so if you want to go and watch the uh, first interview as well, then please do that because it was great to speak to Lars Lenders from SNS and we have another guest from SNS. It's Josh Hayes. Josh, how are you doing, mate? I'm well. How are you, Aaron? I'm really good, thank you. It's it's amazing to, to speak to you today, and it's great to talk about these seven new rides that have already been revealed for this year, and it's nice to go over all these projects, so it's going to be a wonderful interview. Well, that's great. We're, we're always excited to talk about uh, our new ride openings, and uh, we're, we're thrilled that uh, you're having us on today. Thank you. No worries. Um, and the first question really is to talk about these seven editions because I think there's a, a real range of editions. I mean, obviously, in the first interview, I put the poster on screen, so I'll do the same again uh, here. We've got the 4D free spin coasters coming to Ocean Flower Island in China and Motion Gate Dubai and also at Adventureland in Iowa. We've got the Air Launch Coaster at Changda Window of the World located in China. We've got two combo towers at Ocean Paradise and Ocean Flower Island and also Chang... <laughs> it's hard to read from... Uh, my, my, my site's not good. Changking Sunak Land, which is a space yacht tower. So overall, a lot of different projects, a range of projects uh, for 2021 and, and you must be proud of all seven of these projects. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, this this past year, 2020, uh, obviously has been a really difficult year for our industry. Uh, you know, the parks, for the most part, have you know, if they if they were not completely shut down for the for most of the year, they were they were partially shut down, uh, and, and it's really impacted their business, which which certainly trickles down to uh, those of us at the ride manufacturer level. Uh, you know, vendors all across the industry have really struggled because of uh, because of how difficult the pandemic has been. Uh, but fortunate for us, we had a lot of really great projects, um, a lot of really good customers uh, that supported us through the through that. And so um, we're, we're we feel really fortunate to be able to open seven rides in 2021. Uh, and uh, it's it's uh, not something that you know we we necessarily would have predicted knowing what kind of a, a, a difficult year the industry had uh, in 2020. But uh, like I said, we, we feel very fortunate that uh, we, we have so many exciting attractions that will be opening uh, this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of each and every one of these attractions. And, um, you know, without giving anything away, we did speak in the interview with Lars Landers about two long-term projects here in the UK that SNS are somewhat involved with. Nothing specific, thank God, which has been announced, but um, we know that the two long-term projects are Blackpool Central's development and the London Resort. Without giving anything away, I mean, how excited are you about these two projects? Because I think everyone here in the coaster community is really excited to see SNS on board in some way or fashion with um with with the two projects here in the uk yeah certainly we we can't talk about um you know any, any relationship that we have there or or any discussions that are going on but it is it is really exciting anytime you have uh new parks that are announced we obviously we get quite excited about that uh because it's it's new opportunity for us to uh bring more of our products into the marketplace and and for more people to experience sns rides um the, the magnitude, though, of these parks uh, going into the UK is quite significant. Uh, they are very ambitious projects, um, and it, it will only be a positive thing for the industry uh, seeing these projects come online. So we, we are quite excited about them. Uh, we think that they will add a lot of buzz to the industry uh, across the world because they are they're setting out to, to be more than just a regional park. They, they want to be, uh, you know, big uh, Disney-esque uh, scale parks. So it's, uh, you know, any, anything that, that anyone that wants to take on something of that magnitude, uh, you know, we certainly admire them and, and uh, consider them to be, you know, uh, thought leaders in the industry. And, and, um, and, and we hope to have the opportunity to work with them. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm personally really excited about these two projects. Obviously, you guys know about the videos I've done on both Blackpool Central and the London Resort, and we know how excited we are about these projects. Um, I mean, SNS have created loads of wonderful ideas, ranging from roller coasters to, to other attractions. And, I mean, I'm, I'm generally interested to know what. Like how how does the thinking process work for a brand new concept of a new ride? Because with all these designs that have been coming up with in the recent years, like the the steeple chase coaster you guys came up with a few years ago, you know I was thinking you know should uh, parks be uh, revamping their old steeple chase with this kind of model? And you know we see other kind of concepts as well. And I'm sure you guys have got some stuff in the works in the future. You know how does these ideas come about? How co how does the inspiration comes about with these different concepts? And you know how does the inspiration come about? design a ride in that kind of style that's a great question um we 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 approach it from uh, a few different ways uh one we we have an internal product development team uh that consists of our engineers uh, our executive management our sales team uh and and we work together to to look for uh niches in the industry that that are maybe not being filled very well uh, and then we're also dreaming up uh, wild and crazy things. And, and uh, at SNS, we have something that we call the Ideathon, where we get it, ideas from all of our employees. Um, so no matter who you are, you can submit an idea for a ride. Um, and if we end up developing your ride, uh, you know, there's there's a little bit of a, a little financial bonus that comes along with that, and and some. Um, some invention credits that, that come along with it as well. So it's, it's, it's something that our employees like to engage in uh, when we have the ideathons. Um, one of the things that, that we really try to rely on when it comes to developing new concepts is uh, customer feedback. We, we work closely with all of the major park groups as well as the, the regional parks to understand what their customers are looking for um, and, and what they're looking for when it comes to new attractions. And so a lot of our ideas are also born from uh, discussions with our customers and some of the things that they feel like are needed in the industry. Um, and, and then what we do is we take, you know, all of these ideas, we bring everything together sort of into a big pile and, and we talk through uh, what the ideas could mean for us as a company, what they would mean for the industry, uh, where those where those rides would potentially fit in the industry, uh, and then and then we we select uh, what we think are the best ideas and are the most realistic ideas, and we put our engineering team uh, on them to start developing those concepts, uh, to start uh, putting together some models to try and understand you know, what, what would this ride really be like? Um, you know, could, and, and then obviously we also have to balance all of the great ideas with the cost. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of incredible ideas out there, but you know, the, it might be a $20 million, million dollar idea. And, and there's, uh, that, that makes it a difficult thing to, to bring to market when, you know, when parks are not, most parks are not spending, you know, $20 million just, on on uh, you know a, a new ride, not including you know some of the other ancillary costs that come along with that. So um, there, there's there's a balance there that we have to to strike between you know great ideas, costs, and and also you know filling an appropriate uh, niche in the market. Yeah, and, and a new ride. Uh, and, sorry, I was just going to say you know you know that that development process can be anywhere from you know, nine months to several years. Our, our Axis Coaster, which has gotten a lot of buzz um, and, and we believe in the next, uh, in, in the not too distant future, we'll, we'll be able to announce or, or our, we'll have a customer announcing uh, the first Axis Coaster, and, uh, which is really exciting. But, but the development of Axis from when it started all the way through to when the first coaster will be open, uh, you know, we're talking for almost five years. So, it's, it's a long process uh, to, to put it all together uh, because in addition to, you know, say uh, in addition to, you know, great ideas and costs, you know, we also have to, to go through all the steps to make sure that the rides are safe. Um, and so there, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes before, 
you know, new products come to the market. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, when you, when you said the first Axis Coaster, I mean, the Axis Coaster is something that, you know, really excites people in the Coaster community. It's, um, you know, it's it's very exciting. We can't wait to see where the first one's going to go. There's a lot of people saying a lot of different things. And, you know, one thing about Coaster Concepts is the classics, you know, the, the ride concepts that were um, pr produced before and we don't see much of now, things like the Wooden Coasters and the Screaming Squirrels. So would SNS possibly be interesting going back into the, the archives and maybe revitalizing an old Coaster concept or a ride concept that you uh, don't produce anymore? Would you want to go back into that, like the Sky Swats, for example? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that, um, and, and you brought up Steeplechase a few minutes ago, uh, that that's really where what we did with steeplechase. We went into the uh, we, we went into the the old retro uh, stuff. You know, Aerodynamics, um, who we own now, um, had had done some steeplechase rides in the past. Um, certainly, the, some of those steeplechase rides out in the world. The the one at uh, I think it's a Blackpool Pleasure Beach is you know the oldest one in the world, and and it, it, that's a really unique ride. Uh, it, it certainly um, you know, to, today's version of it is it has to be quite a bit different, um, just because you know safety standards have evolved over the years. Uh, but we're we're always looking at uh, you know past rides that we've done and and how we can modify them to make them better. You know, the Screaming Squirrel or the Sky Swatter, um, we, we would certainly entertain doing those again. Uh, we think that that we can improve upon uh, the the original versions of them. Um, you know, the Screaming Squirrel is, is really, was really sort of the first, um, iteration or, or the, or one of the early iterations of our El Loco coaster. Um, and so, you know, what, what we sell now is the, as the El Loco, um, you know, was, was, you know, really came from that Screaming Squirrel concept. So, uh, you know, and, and, and access again, that that sort of is an evolution of you know the the 4D uh, rides that we have done in the past. You know, going all the way back to Arrows X, and then our Free Fly, um, and then our 40 Free Spin. You know, the Axis is sort of like the next step in the evolution of of all of those rides. So um, you know, kind of the long answer to your question is yes, we're we're always looking to build upon and improve upon. Uh, past ideas and, and past successes and even past failures. You know, we, we, we certainly admit that, that, you know, every ride manufacturers had rides that have gone out that haven't been perfect. Um, but, but we think that, you know, we can look at, at, at past failures and, and, and actually turn those into successes. So there's, there's uh, always something to discuss in this industry because there, there are a lot of really terrific ideas. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, when, when you said that you want to go back, possibly go back in for the sky swats and things like that, you know, that really excites me as an attraction fan because I know that, you know, we had one here, Slammer at Thorpe Park, and we always want to see that either replaced by a newer version or, you know, brought back to life in some way. So it'd be really exciting to see a ride like that back in operation in a brand new way. And that leads me into my next point, really, because uh, we spoke about new coaster concepts, we spoke about revitalizing attraction concepts. There's other manufacturers that have made coasters and attraction concepts that work or don't work that maybe could SNS go and maybe challenge themselves and maybe try and create their own versions. For example, using uh, Togo as an example, the Pipeline roller coasters, they were a, a massive hit, especially with the, the Ultra Twister in Japan. And uh, we've had the past ones with the Six Flags. So, um, you know, I think that the Pipeline coaster is maybe an example of how a previous coaster type that maybe work or didn't work under a different manufacturer, maybe SNS could try and challenge themselves again and try and create their own version of these classic concepts like the Virginia Reel as well, a classic wooden coaster concept. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think when it comes to, you know, uh, wooden coasters, that's probably something that, that, um, that we would not uh, get involved in. You know, there's a lot of really great wooden coaster manufacturers and, and, and the technology uh, that, that wooden coasters, um, you know, some of the newer technology, some of the things that Rocky Mountain is doing and, and some of the other great 
uh, wood coaster manufacturers out there. It's probably not an area where we would get involved, but some of the other things like like a pipeline, I mean, we have not had those discussions specifically. Um, but yes, there we, we do look at other uh, concepts that, that may have uh, gone out of style and, and wonder if there's, you know, a, an, an updated way to do that. Um, you know, certainly trying to work around other companies' patents and, and their intellectual property, we, we certainly are sensitive to that. And so when, it, when it's possible for us to do something that doesn't, uh, you know, violate one of our competitors' uh, intellectual property, patents, et cetera, um, then, then yes, we certainly have those conversations. Uh, but, but oftentimes the challenge of trying to take somebody else's idea is, is sort of the, the core, the core idea is, is, is difficult to, um, copy without, um, you know, without violating, uh, some piece of, some copyright, some patent, some intellectual property. So, um, that, that's, that's one of the challenges that, that every coaster manufacturer has, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure that our competitors would love to have, uh, an air launch, uh, version of, of their rides, but, but because we have the, we own the patent on air, air launch coasters, um, that's not available to them. Um, and, you know, similarly, I'm sure they would love to do something similar with, with air launch towers or, um, you know, some of the some of the free spin uh, ride vehicles that we uh, that we do, um, it it just it it's difficult to use other manufacturers' ideas without um, really violating their intellectual property. Yeah, I agree with that, and um, you know it would be nice, but of course, you know we can't violate their own ideas. And um, lastly, really, I'd, the last qu question I'd probably ask is: uh, obviously, we can't give anything away specifically, but um, in terms of uh, the following season, the 2022 season, I mean, I'm sure the 2022 season could be a very exciting year for SNS with possibly the the concepts or projects that you guys have been uh, coming up with over the last couple of years, ready for next season. I mean, is 2022 possibly an exciting year without giving anything away you know 2022 is going to be um what what we are seeing with a lot of parks around the world is uh delays from you know things that that were slated to open in 2020 and 2021 um they're being pushed off and so uh yes there are going to be some exciting ride openings in 2022 um some of that still remains to be seen because you know the park seasons are are uh, just about to get underway in the next month or two, and and it, it will really be up to the parks as to what they want to open. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of it's going to depend on on how busy the parks are this year. Um, if they have another slow year, uh, it it may be difficult for some some of those rides that that could open next year may be difficult for them to open, and so. Um, I think, I think what, you know, from a coaster enthusiast perspective, I think the years you want to look, look forward to are 23 and 24. I think that's when you're, you're really going to see, um, a, a major wave of, uh, new attractions and, um, and, and maybe, maybe some, some really, really high end type things, uh, just because it will have been a little bit of time since the last, you know, major wave of ride opening. So I think the 22, yes, there'll be some exciting things, but uh, I think that the real blockbuster uh, excitement will be in the years 23 and 24. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd probably say that as well. And uh, you know, twenty twenty four is going to be the year of the London Resort opening. So we know twenty twenty four here in the UK is going to be very very exciting anyway. And um, the fact we're going to get possibly a massive surge of openings in twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four is you know definitely very exciting. We've seen a lot of uh, coaster enthusiasts put questions out for the last six seven eight years now about some uk parks you know when's blackpool pleasure beach next coaster when's thought parks next coaster you know it's been nearly 10 years since the swarm and things like that so you know i'm hopefully hopeful fingers crossed that in between 2023 and 2024 a lot of those questions might get answered especially here in the the uk theme park industry yeah definitely definitely 
Well, Josh, thank you very, very much for doing this interview. Much appreciated, and thank you very much for coming on Coach Shell YouTube channel today. Thank you, Aaron. Um, thank you for you guys for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, guys, my name is Coach Shell. Keep living the coast of life. We're getting closer and closer to get to get our goal by the end of the year, which is 4,000 subscribers and a million views. So please make that happen. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Make sure you go check out our earlier video today speaking about Gangster Granny, the ride at Alton Towers and the behind the scenes look. And if you do want to see me react to that behind the scenes video they released, then please comment down below. And a massive shout out once again to Alton Towers for sending me those press images. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an SNS-tastic day.